Hi guys, being in Boston, it's hard not to visit all the major universities like Harvard or MIT. I'm just in the uh, campus of uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology and uh, talking about MIT and thinking about uh, crypto at the same time, it's hard not to uh, think about Algorand project. Why? Algorand uh, is basically he headquartered in Boston and uh, the founder of Algorand project and many of the team members are basically PhDs and uh, professors at the MIT. So stay with me uh, for a, a short video uh, about that. Let me start with a reminder that whatever you hear or see in this video is not intended to be a financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just doing uh, my own research of various uh, crypto projects. So uh, do your own research, do your homework. Uh, this material is for informational purpose only and presents my personal opinion about uh, Algorand and uh, other crypto related stuff. What in my view makes Algorand uh, a bit uh, unique among other crypto projects are three factors. Uh, one of them is uh, definitely uh, the team and uh, their uh, connections and uh, strong background uh, at uh, MIT and other uh, universities. Uh, second uh, factor is a unique uh, consensus algorithm, which is pure proof of stake as they call it. And the third factor is, uh, in my view, uh, what they call uh, Dutch auctions for token distribution. Uh, so uh, let me go uh, through those three things uh, briefly. Okay, so let's start with the founder and the team. Silvio Mikali is a scientist at MIT since uh, 1983. He's also a professor at MIT of uh, computer science, uh, focused on zero-knowledge proof, uh, secure protocols, uh, cryptography, so basically everything what counts for blockchain. In 2012, uh, he received a Turing Award, uh, which is uh, the most prominent award uh, for computer scientists, uh, cryptographers in the world. So basically it's kind of an equivalent of Nobel Prize uh, for the uh, you know, computer science uh, industry. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty significant. From the right angle everything becomes you know, cryptography if you ask me. My fundamental problem is about uh, interaction. In cryptography you have a definitely a notion of an adversary, right? So I want to send you a message, I want you to be the only one who understands what I'm saying, but there is an adversary who captures the message and trying to understand it, right? And so there is a notion you want to defeat this adversary. Uh, in 2017, he uh, is founding uh, Algorand. In the early days of Algorand, uh, the core team uh, nearly fully consists of uh, MIT guys. Uh, so uh, Silvio hires a dozen of uh, PhDs uh, from MIT and uh, they work in uh, his house uh, on the core protocol of Algorand uh, blockchain. The first 11 people, uh, eight were from MIT and uh, we started, you know, according to tradition from my house, not exactly a garage but close. So the dining room was where the programmer lived and uh, so there was so much equipment in this uh, dining table that nobody could even dine anymore. So somehow the more uh, theoretical part was in my study, all hands-on meeting was in the living room, that type of thing, for three months. It was uh, wonderful. Uh, so I, I think uh, he formed a pretty uh, strong team, pretty strong foundation for the uh, core protocol of uh, Algorand. The rest of the Algorand team also looks uh, pretty strong. I encourage you to look up uh, their website. 
uh, basically their uh, partners, advisors and the core team um, those are people from MIT, uh, you'll find them from Princeton, from Harvard, uh, so I, I think that the team is pretty pretty strong. They also have uh, uh, some names from, um, with a background in Microsoft, in ABM, so, so also the corporate world. Uh, so I, I will not be covering them here. I've met Navid uh, sometime back in Poland and I can say he's head of engineering and I can say that uh, he is really a professional guy and uh, I'm assuming that the rest of the team is also very uh, competent and uh, professional so I, I think they, they have a pretty uh, good uh, and uh, competent uh, team so I think that Silvio uh, built a uh, right mixture of uh, competencies uh, for Algorand uh, so people with uh, scientific background people with uh, corporate background, business background, obviously to deliver any project, but especially project in crypto space, which is uh, very complex. You need uh, cryptography, you need uh, technologists, you need someone with uh, game theory, you need mathematicians, you need uh, people who understand uh, business, uh, go-to-market people. Uh, so uh, that's uh, pretty challenging to have a right team uh, in this space. Uh, can Algorand team deliver? Yes, I think they can. Uh, just uh, check out their website, uh, look the names, uh, check their profiles on LinkedIn. I think they have a pretty good team. Obviously, uh, they're probably middle way through uh, with their deliverables. I'll call that uh, a bit later. But, but I think they have the right uh, skill set and expertise on board. So let's talk their technology a bit. Uh, uh, so what is unique for Algorand is their consensus uh, mechanism. They call it pure proof of stake. Uh, but starting with a bit of background, uh, in the blockchain space uh, the key challenge uh, is not how to create the block, it's pretty uh, well known for years already, you know, creating uh, cryptographically secured uh, blocks, uh, uh, you know, which are immutable, that's already known, cryptography known, known this for uh, probably 30 years or, or more. The challenge is how to attach uh, the next block uh, to the chain, who, who should be the block uh, producers, uh, who will receive the reward for that block. And there are various uh, consensus uh, uh, protocols uh, created for this purpose. Obviously, Bitcoin was the first one uh, coming up with uh, proof of work, uh, also known as mining. Uh, so in proof of work, consensus protocols, uh, you know, miners solve kind of cryptographical puzzle and whoever uh, is the first one uh, receives the reward and uh, is uh, uh, the one uh, that is uh, producing the block and uh, uh, the block is attached to the blockchain, uh, which is uh, pretty uh, inefficient as far as energy is concerned because it consumes a lot of energy, it's also pretty slow. So the other approach uh, to uh, achieving consensus uh, is uh, proof of stake. Uh, for example, we have EOS coming up with a delegated proof of stake approach. So there is uh, 21 delegates uh, who are responsible for producing uh, blocks. Uh, and basically, they are supported with uh, stakers, uh, so people who uh, has a sufficient amount of uh, coins. And uh, based on you know amount of the uh, coins being staked, uh, you know whoever out of those uh, 21 delegates is authorized to produce uh, the block uh, uh, is the one taking the reward. Uh, so basically uh, in such an approach uh, obviously there is a risk of uh, cartels being created and uh, uh, risk of eventually centralizing the uh, you know people who are the one producing the blocks. Uh, so delegated proof of stake is probably not a good idea. It's fast obviously. I mean EOS says there has a like a thousand transactions per second, but uh, we don't need a blockchain probably uh, to do that. So uh, depots, uh, despite being uh, proof of stake, uh, fast, uh, not expensive, uh, but uh, don't give you uh, really decentralization. Uh, and there are other approaches. There are interesting approaches like hybrids uh, of proof of work and proof of stake, uh, something what uh, Decred came up with as a first Right now, Aeon will be doing also hybrid of uh, proof of work and proof of stake. So I think those uh, kind of uh, approaches uh, has a future that they still need to <laughs> see the light. So how 
the pure proof of stake works in Algorand. Uh, in Algorand, uh, it works the following way: uh, there is uh, a committee of 1,000 members uh, selected, uh, and those members are the ones uh, producing, signing uh, the blocks uh, and uh, saying which block should be attached to the blockchain. And uh, to make it fast. Uh, First, there is a uh, one member uh, selected who basically produces the block, signs the block and says that's the correct uh, block. And then uh, this committee of uh, 1,000 members, uh, also randomly selected, uh, they are checking uh, this block and saying if it is correct or not. And uh, if majority of them confirms that the block is fine, it gets attached to the blockchain. Uh, so yeah, so the question arises uh, who selects the committee uh, and uh, particular members, uh, because that's uh, potentially the uh, risk of, uh, you know, bad actors, etc. Uh, so uh, answer is uh, the committee selects themselves. Uh, so they run a, a secure uh, you know, cryptographically secured uh, random function and if they kind of lottery, cryptographic or lottery, and if they won the lottery, they show the ticket uh, with a proof that they've won the lottery and uh, at the same time uh, they uh, say yes or no uh, to the block which got produced before but by that one member. Uh, so at the same time when they show the ticket uh, that they are winners of the lottery, they, they also uh, say their opinion about the block. So that basically uh, you know, creates an environment when it's, too, when it's too late to really corrupt them uh, because they've already <laughs> revealed uh, you know, their, their vote. Right? So it's, it's pretty smart. Uh, we obviously trust here this uh, cryptographically secured uh, uh, you know, lottery uh, that it works fine, but, but I guess uh, providing it was designed by uh, uh, you know, all the best cryptographers of the world from MIT I think we can uh, we can trust it. Uh, so uh, um, approach that first just one member uh, creates and signs the block. It's fast. It's super fast. And then also uh, 1,000 members, majority of 1,000 members uh, confirming the block, uh, verifying it, and, and uh, saying the opinion of the block. It's also super fast. So I guess. Uh, uh, you know, it uh, might be efficient uh, approach. Obviously, we need uh, to prove this on the, you know, massive scale with uh, thousands of uh, business, real business transactions. But uh, in concept and probably in test environment, it, it works uh, uh, just fine. Um, it's uh, probably decentralized. I mean, uh, there are, there is no. Uh, you know, I think minimal threshold uh, for being uh, in the committee. Uh, is just uh, you know depending how many coins you have so what's your stake the bigger stake you, you have overall the, the better chances you have that you will be selected to uh, be part of the committee right so um, potentially anyone can can, can uh, be in this committee uh, and be selected uh, to uh, give an opinion on the uh, blog also, there is no penalties uh, for, you know, misbehaving, uh, which basically doesn't discourage majority of people uh, to be part of this consensus protocol. Assumption of Algorand consensus protocol is that majority of uh, uh, people in the game are really, uh, uh, no, good actors. They, they, <laughs> they are as you, me, and uh, many people around. They, they are, no, they are not having like uh, bad intentions. Uh, so if that's true, uh, then basically Algorand's approach uh, should work fine. Obviously, there is another question that comes up to my mind. Okay, what happens if uh, there are bad actors with uh, uh, a lot of coins, so big stake? Uh, they probably have uh, better chances to be selected to be the block uh, uh, producers or to be selected for verifying the blocks. Uh, but if that's true, then again, uh, if they have uh, such a big uh, stake uh, in the Algorand blockchain, uh, probably 50% of coins or more, then the question arises, uh, actually are incentivized to attack uh, their own uh, blockchain. Because uh, if they just, uh, you know, uh, attack the, the consensus protocol and, you know, steal money from, from uh, their own blockchain, they, they are attacking their own business. So. Uh, 
game theory comes uh, into play here and I guess uh, um, doesn't make sense for uh, people with uh, if that's even possible with a major stake in the game to attack uh, their own network so to make sure that the tokens are distributed fairly and uh, as broadly as possible Algorand introduced this concept of uh, Dutch auctions uh, Dutch auctions are happening periodically uh, for example, 20-30 million coins can be uh, sold at particular auction. I think they uh, <laughs> predicted 3 uh, billion coins overall for, for that auctions. Uh, and uh, uh, everyone can participate in such an auction. An auction starts with uh, you, uh, uh, you know, dedicating particular amount in dollars. So let's say you want to, uh, you know, invest $100 in all the tokens and the uh, price of the token is decreasing in time, linearly, uh, starting with uh, uh, you know, some starting point and decreasing up to, to the uh, minimal, uh, minimal level which they uh, envisioned for a particular auction. Uh, and obviously, if uh, during that uh, period of time uh, they've sold all the tokens and the price didn't reach uh, the minimum uh, level uh, which was uh, predicted for, for that auction, the auction is closed at the level when all the tokens were sold. Uh, so uh, let's say I'm starting uh, to participate in an auction at the level of $1 and uh, uh, price uh, is decreasing, it reaches uh, $0.80, cents, $0.50 cents, uh, uh, and the uh, auction is closed at, at $0.50 cents, no matter that I join the auction at $1. I buy algo tokens uh, you know, at the price of 50 cents. Everyone participating in auction buy the algo tokens at the same price, which is which is fair, uh, I think. Uh, and another important uh, uh, aspect is uh, that you, as a uh, participant in that auction, auction uh, you have a uh, you know chance if you don't like it uh, year after that auction or year after you bought the algo tokens to uh, give them back and get your money uh, back in return uh, so uh, you, you don't get all the money but you get uh, even up to 90 percent of your uh, original uh, you know amount which you've invested so if you bought your uh, algo tokens at one dollar uh, they will buy it back from you year after if you are not happy with uh, what you've received at uh, then, then they, they are buying back your uh, tokens at 90 cents uh, so that's again a pretty fair approach i i think uh, and again increases my confidence in, in uh, their uh, you know business model behind it and intentions as well so just to summarize, I think Algorand is a pretty interesting project, uh, yet at early stage, I mean, despite they've launched their mainnet uh, several weeks ago, um, it's uh, yet un you know, under development, so obviously the consensus uh, mechanism works, uh, but they are still working on uh, uh, their version on uh, smart, smart contracts, uh, I think they call it smart square contracts, uh, they are working on uh, their uh, version of uh, atomic swaps uh, uh, they, they have a pretty interesting approach uh, to storage uh, they call it vault uh, so a mechanism which allows uh, anyone to uh, run a light node but uh, with uh, uh, you know uh, similar parameters as the full node but doesn't require you to have this massive amount of storage uh, and many many others so so there are still a lot of interesting uh, stuff on their plate to be developed uh, but at the same time I mean uh, providing that uh, the mainnet uh, got launched uh, several weeks ago and they already have like uh, more than 1000 nodes uh, running I, I think it's it's pretty neat I think it's pretty cool uh, that's a promising project with a, with a good uh, with a good solid team what's uh, worth highlighting is also fact that they have uh, released already for different SDKs uh, so for software development kits for Java developers for JavaScript developers for Go developers and for Python developers which I think it's awesome I mean the coverage uh, of those four platforms pretty popular especially 
you know, Java, JavaScript, uh, Python, also Go, rising pop in popularity. Uh, uh, that's amazing. I mean, I, I haven't uh, verified the completeness of their solution, uh, but uh, I guess if there are any developers, I, I believe there are developers listening to this channel, please go ahead. Uh, I'll provide the links uh, to uh, respective resources in the video description and uh, check it out. Uh, I think it's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so far, I, I didn't know that uh, Java, full Java is actually available uh, on and other blockchain than Aeon, so maybe there are some, uh, you know, areas for cooperation between those two. Uh, what else? I mean, they, they run a lot of hackathons, uh, a lot of meetups all around the, the world, uh, also here in Boston, in US, but they've been in Poland as well, they've been in Berlin recently, so a lot of happening, that they build their community, uh, that, that's clearly they, their focus. Uh, I've seen them recently all around, uh, they've been added to a Coinbase uh, recently, uh, so to, in my opinion, in my view, they, they, they are doing all the important steps which are required for a, for a successful project, but, but the competition in, in this space, sorry it's loud, <laughs> the competition in this space is huge, so, so uh, good project, uh, good team, uh, good delivery is one thing and how to gain the traction, how to uh, reach out uh, to the masses is, is the other uh, part of the story. So I keep my fingers crossed uh, for Algorand. I also do support them for Poland. I'm, I'm kind of contact if anything, uh, you may also reach out to me. I'll provide the links to both uh, um, you know, the sources, the global sources uh, and then some of the Polish uh, materials which are published in the video description uh, below. And uh, for sure you'll hear more about Algorand from me on this channel, uh, both in English and in Polish, uh, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, for now, uh, just uh, enjoy uh, <laughs> this material and I do encourage you to do your own research, uh, do your own study, learn about uh, this project uh, and other open, public, decentralized networks. I think it's pretty fascinating what's happening in this space. Cheers.